I, I'm literally gonna give you a live guide as as I do on my YouTube channels. It's probably gonna make into a video anyway, but uh, I think it's a good idea for me to go over the deck for you real quick and uh, uh, really try to explain the gist of it. Uh, so you have a better idea of what we will be looking out for. You asked, so, uh, you asked uh, yeah. if uh, Secret Hunter is a control deck. It, it's not exactly a control deck, it's more of a... It's a tempo deck is what it is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the secrets yeah. are basically yeah. tempo for you and negative tempo for the opponent. That's something a lot of people don't realize. Like, makes uh, sense, yes. Like, even if your secret doesn't do anything right now, it definitely makes the opponent play uh, less than optimally for them. Like, uh, if you play something like a hidden meaning and they anticipate it, they're going to be floating mana. If, the, if you play Ice Trap, they're going to try not to play uh, spells. That kind of deal. So it's really, you're a tempo deck that also has tons of negative tempo for the opponent, and you just are a nuisance to play around. That's why that's why decks like this really work well on lower ranks as well. But even in Diamond to Legend right now, it's actually doing very well. Like, uh, uh, look at these stats right now. It's actually uh, insanely uh, OP for the last three days. It's the the best deck right now. 63% win rate, 1200 games. Uh, that's literally for like less than three days. Uh, so these are tremendous stats. Hand buff Pally is also doing amazingly well apparently. But uh, yeah, basically right now Secret Hunter is actually performing best from Diamond to Legends, so that says a lot for the deck. Uh, I feel like uh, your, you know, your primary win conditions, uh, is, I think it's like Star Strong Bow, right? And uh, uh, Ziliax, obviously, but uh, if you if you kind of just you know allow your opponent to deal with those with those threats, you kind of run out of steam. I, I feel like you basically, with the help of your early game, you can even make your game plan into something like vicious litter spears. Like those can stick around for a while with all the secrets you actually have. Mm -hmm. You also have patchwork pals, with, which help you with uh, things like Huffer, Misha, Liak, and all of that. Uh, you have a little bit of extra reach with kill commands. Uh, mm -hmm. Product nine repeating all of those secrets. Pazik is a very annoying sticky minion. Like not only do they uh, have to figure out how the hell are they dealing with the four four and the free freeze that come out of it, but they also have to play around all of your nasty secrets. So it's really, it's really a, a headache for most opponents to really handle you, especially on the uh, weaker ranks. People really have a hard time dealing with all of those uh, nasty threats, and you can definitely punish Big Bam. Like if you stick a vicious for a few turns, you get the bunch of bananas and all of that. So uh, that can be extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, this is the the variant we're gonna be using, and. Um, uh, I think it's... I have a I I think I have a bit of a different list. Uh, well, actually. It's, nothing it's wrong like, with so... that, but uh, if we have the best performer in our grasp, it's usually not a bad idea to to go with those. Apparently, there is a similar list with uh, the camouflage mount. I did actually find the camouflage mount to be quite the good card inclusion. It's uh, actually pretty powerful. With it makes your board really sticky. Gives you the extra plus three plus three uh, minion afterwards with the bonus effect. So that can definitely be nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that that that's exactly my list. I feel like. Yeah, but uh, as you can see, it's actually a lot weaker, a lot more gains, but almost five percent less uh, win rate. So there's probably a reason to it. So it's probably a better idea to, to try this uh, new list. It's more refined apparently and better performing. So might be a good idea. Anyway, we have a bunch of bananas, so you can actually. Uh, start buffing whatever you stick and it really works amazingly well with things like Vicious Litter Spear because not only you get plus one plus one but also an extra plus one on the attack for that turn for the Vicious and you don't even have to use it on the Vicious for that plus one to happen so that's pretty powerful. Costume Singer is amazing so you can thin out your deck so the more uh, this thing sticks on the board the better it is because you're gonna have less secrets to top deck and you can top deck some of the other cards instead. Miracle Salesman is all, all around an amazing uh, one drop, like one mana 2-2, two, two, that's premium stats on its own. It also gives you the tradable so you can cycle through your deck faster. The Sneaky Snakes is not a bad uh, extra, basically one mana 2-2 two, two on turn one kind of deal. It's also stealth so you could uh, stick him for as long as you like if the opponent doesn't have AoE and you can wait a few turns before you start attacking. Uh, just because you can attack with something doesn't always mean you should be attacking and stealth minions are a prime example for that. Mm -hmm. um, the Vicious Litter Spear is obviously amazing with the bananas, like we said, and it's also a very chunky turn 1-1-3, one, one, which can become very powerful very fast. As for the secrets, we have Bait and Switch, Bargaining Bin, Hidden Meaning, and Ice Trap. We only run six secrets straight up, and uh, the way you use these is gonna be uh, uh, very, very annoying for the opponent. Like, they're always gonna have to play around all of these... Uh, 
like Ice Trap and Hidden Meaning are especially annoying. Bait and Switch based key prevents the opponent from feeling too good about slapping into seemingly small minions. Like imagine attacking into a Vicious Slitter Spear on turn 2 and suddenly it becomes a freaking 4-6. Uh, which is gonna become even stronger afterwards once you start uh, popping some more spells on it. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's actually very very annoying to deal with like that. Bargaining Bin helps you uh, with the card draw, with the cycle. You have weapons, so uh, you're always going to be uh, drawing uh, two of the other cards when the opponent plays one of the other two. Um, and uh, we're only running a single one of these because uh, usually you do run out of weapons quite quickly because we only have a couple of them. Hidden Meaning is also super annoying for the opponents. They're going to try to play uh, off curve, basically always uh, floating that one extra mana so they don't trigger this, giving you an extra free drop. That can be... Extremely annoying for them. The Ice Trap prevents them from using some big uh, removals. If you time this one correctly, you can protect a very good board for yourself. If the opponent doesn't have a cheap way to test for it, like the coin, like a one-drop spell, they don't really plan on using that turn. Uh, it can be uh, very detrimental to their removal game plan, so that can help a lot. The Patchwork Pals, that's just uh, tons of flexibility, like getting yourself a uh, uh, two mana, two mana Huffer, two mana Liak, uh, uh, and uh, Misha. All of those are uh, pretty, pretty nasty like that. And uh, that way, uh, Huffer can be like with the charge damage. You can do a lot of damage from hand that way with the help of a bunch of bananas and whatnot. You also have Kill Command for extra reach. Uh, so you do have a little bit of explosiveness uh, to your uh, mid game, so the opponent doesn't feel too comfortable even when you don't even have a board. The Titan Force Trap helps you uh, with all of those uh, random secrets you could be getting. A cool thing you could be doing with the Titan Force Traps is if you want to be getting a specific secret and you have some of the other secrets already, if you have the mana to spend and you're planning on doing that, you could actually start off with, let's say, playing a Hidden Meaning. And after you play the Titan Forge Trap, you're going to have a narrower pool of discovered secrets. Because you're not going to be offered a hidden meaning because you can't stack secret on top of secret. So if you're really looking for something like an Explosive Trap against the Flood Pally, you can play a secret or two. And that basically almost guarantees you're going to also see an Explosive Trap. But Because how many secrets are there in Standard right now? Like six, seven tops? Uh, so uh, that's a cool way to narrow down, basically uh, streamline your luck, increase your odds of uh, getting the ones you're actually looking for. I'm not. Kill. I'm not actually. I'm not. Sorry. I'm not actually getting how that works. So you discover and cast a secret, right? So you discover. Yes, from, from but if you from already your, from your deck, right? no, no, you don't discover from your deck. Discover yeah. the, the the discover mechanic that discovers from uh, all possible things you could yeah. be doing, from uh, the like secrets, yeah, in the game, mm -hmm. like all secrets that are in standard right now but also it, it's not gonna show you secrets you already have on yourself because you cannot <laughs> uh -huh. i get it I get because it, yeah. you cannot stack a secret on top of a secret yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's so, how so, you can uh increase your odds of actually finding the one you're really looking for a lot of the cases it's gonna be a freezing trap or explosive trap that kind of deal do yeah. discover uh, secrets from from other classes like mage secrets uh Most this is, if it's not specified you always discover from your own class uh -huh, uh -huh. So uh, some cards do specify, discover uh, a random class card or something like that, mm -hmm. discover a different class card, but uh, this one, if it's not specified, you discover from your own uh, class kind of deal. Uh, we have Kill Command in here, basically extra explosiveness, as long as you have a beast on the board, that's free mana, 5 extra damage, which ain't no joke a lot of the times, and it's a lot of extra reach, basically you could have 7 damage from hand, even if the opponent has a taunt up. Uh, stuff like that, you can just go over it with a kill command and a hero power, and that can take him from nowhere. Couple of Observer of Myths, uh, Mysteries. Uh, this one actually does cast uh, from other classes, and the only other class that has secrets in standard right now would be Mage, so you only get uh, Hunter and Mage secrets out of this. And the cool thing about this guy is uh, it uh, can actually uh, feed your product 9 with uh, more secrets, like some Mage secrets can be helpful like that. As long as they get the trigger, uh, Product 9 can also pick up the things from Observer of Mysteries, so that can be kind of cool, getting yourself some uh, counter spells, some extra 8 armor kind of deal, explosive runes, uh, some of the more impactful main secrets right now. Or you can just get some other, like Rat, or Dirty Rat, or no, Rat, rat Trap? Rat Trap. That uh, summons you a 6-6 six, six and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, this is a cool little extra secret generator for the Product 9. 
And it's basically a lot of uh, a lot of negative tempo for the opponent again. I mean, you're also uh, losing a little bit of tempo playing this guy because it's a three mana two two, not exactly premium stats like you would usually pay one mana for shit like that. Uh, but getting yourself a couple of random secrets a lot of the times forces the opponent to actually not really do much on their turn uh, in order for them to actually not trigger some of those random secrets because in some cases it can be really bad for them. Bozik is a very interesting inclusion, and here it's a very sticky minion, a lot of negative tempo for the opponent again. Not the best stats for the mana, obviously 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. What is this, classic? Even classic had 4 mana, 4-5s. Four uh, but it's very annoying because if the opponent kills this, you get a couple of free frees, so it's actually a 4 mana, 6-6. Six, six. If the opponent doesn't kill this, but actually spends uh, 6 mana on uh, bullshit free frees, that's also a lot of negative tempo for them because ain't nobody got time to play vanilla static free frees. Uh, so again, a lot of negative tempo, and uh, very, very sticky to remove, especially when you uh, consider that you're probably going to have a secret or two on top of it. So it becomes very, uh, quite the conundrum for the opponent to actually handle stuff like this. We also have Mantle Shapers, uh, they usually get discounted very nicely, especially if you're going second, because you also are going to have the coin as well as an extra card. And the best way to discount this guy would be with things like Bunch of Bananas and your Secrets. So they usually drop uh, fairly uh, fairly quickly at a fairly big discount, like turn free 2-2 two, two kind of deal. 2 mana, I mean. Uh, so that can be a lot of extra tempo for you. Product 9 is pretty interesting. Uh, the thing about him is he recasts every secret that triggered this game. Uh, so let's say if you play Observer of Mysteries and the secrets don't get triggered but actually get deleted at the end of your turn, uh, the Product 9 is not going to recast those secrets, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but um, as long as they get recasted, um, as long as they get triggered, he's going to be recasting them for you. Uh, if you already have some secrets on yourself and you play Product 9, if that secret got uh, triggered before and you have a second copy of it active now, uh, Product 9 is actually going to show what the secret you are having that got denied, get it? Like, uh, if you have, a, let's say, a bait and switch got triggered on turn 3, and then you cast another bait and switch on turn 4, uh, and then you play Product 9 and the bait and switch still hasn't gotten triggered the second one, uh, Product 9 is going to start recasting secrets, and it's actually going to show for the opponent bait and switch. So you're basically telling the opponent you have another bait and switch active. Uh, which is, it, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, giving you a little bit of uh, extra detailed information here. Not really super, uh, super beneficial for you or, or anything, but uh, you could be considering if you want to be playing the Product 9 in a situation like that. Because you're basically telling the opponent there's a bait and switch active if you do that, so... That could be a kind of negative impact for you. But yeah, all around Product 9 is also a pretty pretty nasty uh, minion to be handling. We have the Star Strong Bow. Again, gets discounted by triggered secrets. So uh, this can go very, very discounted very quickly. And uh, it's a lot of extra damage. Like, basically, it could be... If you discount these fairly well, it could be like 4 mana 20 damage for you across 4 turns, so that can be pretty annoying and pretty pretty uh, big damage. And lastly we have Zilliax, and this one is actually going for the plus 1 plus 1 module as well as the cost 1 less, which is kind of interesting. I kind of like the other the other uh, Zilliax a bit better, I think. Uh, the other Zilliax was uh, uh, the one that grew, right? Uh, yeah, it grew, and uh, I think it also had that downside or something. Yeah, but I'm, I'm it's sure. really an up. I mean, yeah, it's a plus yeah, yeah, four, plus yeah, yeah. four. It deals really damage down. at the end. It's a pretty big minion like that. Uh, but I guess this one also has some merit to it, so we are going to have to test that out, see how it feels. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it for the deck. Like I said, it plays out like a tempo deck that has tons of negative tempo for the opponent. So... While you're building up your tempo, you're also throwing out some secrets here and there to basically give the opponent negative tempo, make them play awkwardly, float mana, not cast secrets, uh, not cast spells kind of deal, not attack your minions. Uh, it's it's basically a very, very big puzzle for the opponent how they, ha they can handle all your stuff, because depending on what secret you're playing, uh, they should be playing drastically differently, and it's basically a... A game of guessing for them a lot of times, and you can be uh, very annoying like that. Matchup-wise, we don't have that much stats showing, but uh, as you see, you're going to be great against things like Spell Mages and Highlander Warriors, which is always fun. Uh, if we drag it out longer time, can we see more? Not really. Let's see the other more populated list so we can get a better idea of what the matchups are going to be looking like. Yeah, here it looks a bit better. 
apparently Hand Buff Death Knight. If we see those, we're not going to be very happy. And Hand Buff Pally is also pretty bad for us. It kind of uh, makes kinda. it kind of makes it kind of makes sense because mm. uh, it, we our negative tempo does not affect uh, you know their value, their gain, yeah, their pretty guessing. Much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they're gonna have a little bit too bigger uh, stuff for our crap, and they also have a good amount of healing. So, but as you can see, everything else looks pretty decent. So that's we got that going for us. As for the mulligan uh, phase, here's what it looks like going first. We're going to be looking for a Vicious Slitter Spear. The Miracle Salesman is going to be great. If you already have a Vicious Slitter Spear, Bananas can be awesome. Hidden Meaning is usually not a bad idea. Costume Singer is always a great idea. I wouldn't really hold on to Mantle Shaper as much going first unless I already have a perfect hand like Vicious Slitter Spear Bananas. Uh, but I guess it still gets discounted by... Uh, if you have some secrets and whatnot, like let's say if you have snakes and hidden meaning, I guess you can also consider keeping the Mantle Shaper, but it's not gonna be a always keep Mantle Shaper kind of deal, like you're not gonna straight up keep Mantle Shaper and mulligan the other cards away, you're only gonna hold on to it if you already have uh, somewhat of a good hand that supports it. Um, other than that, I wouldn't really hold on to Titan Force Traps much, I feel like it's a bit too slow. I wouldn't mind top decking it, but straight up holding it in the mulligan, probably not such a good idea. As for when going second, the situation is not much different. Um, the Mantle Shaper here, I'd say, is uh, no questions asked kind of key because you do have the coin, so that's straight up 4 mana 5-5, five, five. can't say no to that. And uh, you're also having bigger probabilities of finding extra spells, so you can basically drop them as soon as you're free in most cases. Uh, your secrets are still pretty decent, at least the Hidden Meaning Ice Trap, I guess, can also be somewhat of a consideration. Uh, snakes are great. As you can see, Vicious is actually not as amazing here. I'd still keep the shit out of it, though, because uh, it's still better to do something on turn one than nothing. Uh, Costume Singer still fends out your deck, so it's still probably going to be a good keep, even though it's very low on the win rate when going second. But as you can see, the keep rate is actually very high, so people still... Uh, do keep it, and for good reason, like it's always beneficial, it forces the opponent to deal with it, it draws you a card, and it also gives you something to do on turn one, so definitely not bad. But when going second, you don't really hold on to too many one drops, like one drop, one one drop tops is usually enough. And uh, all around, as you can see, product 9 is not something we're going to be holding on to, same with... Uh, Patchwork Pals and things like that. All around, that's it for the deck. It's not very expensive. It only has three legendaries in here, being Posic, Product 9, and Zilliax. And the rest is actually pretty cheap. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see how we do with this pretty good deck right now. Yeah, I would also like to, 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 to ask you about, you know, the whole difference about uh, going first, going second. What do you want to look out in the head? Because uh, th th that's actually a pretty funny thing because I've never thought that you uh, want different hands if, mm -hmm. you, if you go first uh, or if you go second. The philosophy of going first, going second kind of deal is when you are going first, you're going to be the first one doing stuff on the board. So when you are going first, you're basically going to be the one asking the questions and the opponent is going to have to have the answers for those questions a lot of the time. When you are going second, you're most likely going to have to answer the opponent's questions. Um, so uh, you kind of want to be uh, anticipating the situation you're going to be finding yourself in. Like turn one when you're going first, the board is empty, you're on the play, you can drop one drops. Uh, but turn one when you're going second, the board is probably already full. So uh, playing just a straight up one mana costume singer, you don't have any uh, fantasies that it's gonna stick for long, like it's probably getting killed instantly. But it's still gonna draw your card, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Your particular yeah. deck is not as much uh, uh, of a downside to be... Uh, like it's not gonna change your game plan drastically going first or second, but other decks definitely do uh, tend to show quite a different uh, playstyle depending if you're going first or second. It's basically when you're going second, you're probably gonna look for answers as well. But with your deck, you don't really have much in terms of answers, so uh, it, it really doesn't apply as much the general philosophy, at least. But you definitely need to be thinking about are you going first, are you going second? Because uh, when you're going first, you only have three cards and you don't have the coin. When you're going second, however, you have four cards and you also have the coin. So in your in your particular case, that makes Mantle Shaper a great card. Because not only are you getting a zero mana minus one uh, for your mantle shaper, but you also get extra card in your hand, so uh, extra spells to even discount it further, kind of deal. Get it? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's uh, a good way to sum it up, I guess. Okay. Uh, if you don't have yeah. any other questions, we can uh, jump into the games and see how it feels.
Uh, just I just copied the list. Uh, the list. I think I've I've got everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, do you have it? And you uh, do you use deck tracker as well? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Have you uh, um, activated all of the extra beneficial options like damage counter, probabilities, all of that nonsense? Um, not sure. It's it's like it's standard settings. I've got okay, the okay, so it's not uh, active. Let's go ahead version. and do that for you then. Open up your uh, deck tracker and go to options. Yeah, let me. Okay. Go to general. Yep. And check this box number seven. I think height height timers. Make sure it's unticked. Okay. This is gonna show you how much time you have left for your turn. Uh, also, under general, go to player. Yeah. In the middle section, you can uh, check the first box, show board attack counter. Sure. You can also check the highlight last drawn cards, the fourth box. Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's, it's already. Okay, so. and at the bottom, you can check all of the things, deck title wins, card on top, all of that nonsense. Make sure they're all checked. That's going to show you a lot of extra info. And under player, go to opponent, and we're basically going to do the same thing. In the middle section, the middle box, show board attack counter for the opponent. You can check that one. Yep. And also include created cards and highlight discarded from deck. Make sure they're checked. Include created cards and, oh yeah, highlight discarded card from deck. Mm -hmm. okay. And at the bottom, again, win rate, card counter, all of those five boxes. Make sure they're checked. Sure. Okay, that's about it for the options. Now we're ready to jump into it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. What's their mm. game plan? We're going for Rogues this. usually either like to draw a lot nowadays or they like to excavate a lot nowadays. It's one or the other. We're expecting we have... him to be an excavate rogue, so he's gonna be having a lot of extra random spells. What are you thinking about this hand? Do any of these cards really help us open up the I game? Th I think um, like hidden meaning is nice, but we don't have uh, first of all, we're going first, so we don't have any any creatures, any threats mm -hmm. to put on board. So I th I think this set is not actually that good. Yeah, I'm not against throwing the whole thing. Like the hidden meaning and the bunch of bananas are nice support cards, but we don't have anything to support right now, so we'd rather try and look hard for those instead. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's throw it all. I was thinking about keeping bananas. Okay, we've got the sinker. It's nice. I Out of the cards we uh, saw, I we think got... your uh, hidden meaning oh. was the only keepable card, if we have to be honest. Okay, what are we thinking here? Which one do you want to open up with? Well, uh, honestly, if if you know, if I didn't hear anything you, you just said, I, I would just probably play the sinker and, and that's it. But I think we can do Slither Spear. I something. think I still actually like the costume singer better because right now this guy is gonna probably have to spend his coin to hero power into it. So let's play the singer. Because you also don't really have a great plan for this vicious slitter spear right now. Like you play it and then what? We don't even have amazing well, spells or well, amazing well, secrets yeah, to really play around. We could like play if, like if... a nice trap. We could play like a nice trap. Yeah. Maybe go face for two, but that's not not exactly huge. You know, it's not exactly. Give me just huge. one second. Right. Okay, what are we thinking here? I'm thinking hidden meaning, honestly, because uh, it's gonna force him to either hold out his mana or uh, like uh, play something. Then when you know we, we get free value, we get three free cost minion. Maybe it's not the worst thing the in the face. world, but I'm also considering maybe just going with both the one drops here. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and, let's let's just we... tempo out and we go face. There's not a single reason in the world we'd make that trade. Like yeah. he's the one who wants to do those. If we had a bait and switch uh, in our disposal right now, we could have gone with that, but we didn't. And getting a random free drop right now wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, but far from the best either. No. Yeah. If we're talking about being uh, efficient mana-wise, it would have probably been better to just play a secret now so you can actually play a one-drop plus another secret next turn, because right now we're probably going to float some mana if you don't top deck a one-drop, but you do, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, what do you want to do here now? Uh, well, we drew a one-drop, so I'm thinking, you know, we're getting bait and, bait and switch, probably. Uh, just, just, you know, to kind of protect our, our Slither Spear. 
and we play Miracle Sales Metal. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, I like that well enough. And we're gonna go face, because he's the one who wants to be making these trades, honestly. Yeah, and we also we also get free value from, from exactly. that uh, one attack, one bonus attack. Yeah. He could have a spell to handle this. He could discover a spell to handle this. A lot of things from can happen. From class that costs three or less, okay. Okay, and it's probably... Yeah, that's pretty annoying. Did indeed discover the good stuff, but he got fucked with the, with the trade. Now he gave us a lot of extra stuff, so we're happy. What are you thinking about this one now? Uh, I'm thinking Bargain Bin is, is really good, because we, we get like two cards anyway. Whatever, whatever my opponent does, so it's really nice. Uh... I think obviously we go face. That's and probably we can we can also try to bait out hidden meaning just to get ourselves like a bit a bit a bigger creature on board. Something right like now we have a very massive minion. This is only turn four and you already have a five attack minion on the board, so it probably yeah. would be a good idea to try and protect the most of it. And right now, I think the worst you can do to this man would be Ice Trap plus Bait and Switch, because that's probably gonna deny him removing this for another turn, and you might even have yourself an 8th attack minion next turn that way. So I think yeah. it's gonna be Ice Trap plus Bait and Switch instead. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Actually the thing about sense. cards like Bargaining Bin, they're great, but you play them when you're low on steam. Right now, we're full steam ahead kind of deal. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you don't have time to waste to draw cards. Right now, we're concentrating on this man's mouth. So, yeah. uh, you gotta really, uh, prioritize. Like, bargaining bin is something you play when you don't have anything better to do. Like, <laughs> bargaining bin is something we're gonna play when, when we've used our hero power, for instance, kind of deal. Okay, that is a lot of damage, my guy. That's a lot of damage, kind sir. Thank you kindly. There we go. He's still gonna face, well, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and, this can be uh, annoying as fuck. Okay, what are we uh, thinking here? I'm thinking we... Wait, we have 8 damage right now, so he's gonna be in... Uh... Bah, 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 bah. I'm sorry. He's gonna be at 13. We're not we're not gonna get, have uh, uh, kill command five damage, so we're not at lethal range right now. I'm thinking, you know, observer of mysteries uh, um, into probably probably hidden meaning. I those think. are the cards we're gonna play, but do you think there's a better way to sequence those cards, given what we've heard already? If you play the hidden meaning first, that's gonna ensure you're not getting another hidden meaning out of it. So that's going to increase your odds right. of finding another plus right. 3 plus 3, and that right. can be huge right now. Right. So yeah. let's hit Meaning plus Observer of Mysteries and, and smack the mouth area. What, what do we got? Eh, you got your got? favorite secret. <laughs> we got Ice Barrier, which is eh. And we've got... The Bargaining Bin, bargain your favorite bin. card. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty nasty. We've got snakes and we've got the bow. But you got the bow, so that's a ton of damage. That is going to be lethal across two turns, so that helps a lot. Oh, <laughs> we fucked him with the <laughs> with well, the coins. Not too much, uh, honestly. But yeah, he could have spent a, a bit it's, more it's, there it's, now, it's, couldn't it's, he? It's, it's funny though. He is yeah. going to give us a hidden meaning, which is nice. So we could actually have ourselves lethal right about now. This star strung bow is going to be only a one drop if it triggers, and it probably will. And it did. So next yeah, round we can one mana Starstrung, free damage from the kill command, and hero power kind of deal. We could even get 5 damage with the Sneaky Snakes. Depends if he goes face right now, because that's going to be pretty massive, but would be pretty dumb the way he played it. Okay, he doesn't. Okay, we've got... Uh, pretty... Obviously Battle Cries don't trigger. Nope. Okay, what do you do? Um... Well, first of all, obviously this goes to face. We play probably play Star Strong Bow, I'm pretty sure. Uh so if we use our hero power we only have ten ten damage. And we also did didn't we have kill command? Yeah, we do have kill command. So wait, don't we have lethal right now? That's what I wanna hear. <laughs> and that's it? Pretty much. So you yeah, can just get a kill like that. We play this, we play this. 
and... We could have been even more mana efficient if you actually just played the one mana Sneaky Snakes, which gives you two beasts, and that would have made you a five mana right. kill command oh, instead. Right. Yes, yes. But it didn't really matter, well. so that's why I didn't really push towards that agenda. Uh, that's the thing with decks like this. You should always ask yourself at the beginning of the turn, do you actually have lethal? Because a lot of the time the answer is going to surprise you. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, like, usually when you go after turn 5 with decks like these, that should be a reoccurring question for you at the beginning of each turn. Even if the board is full with a ton of lifesteal minions and shit, the first question you need to ask yourself, can I actually fucking kill my opponent right now? Because if you can't, you probably lose anyway. But a lot of people, including myself sometimes, we just go into this tunnel vision kind of mode and you try to survive. And yeah, yeah, after you've yeah. done all of that shit, you're like, wait, I could have just killed him, fucking idiot. So, uh... I actually, actually, in that game, I kind of missed why. Uh, how did he like wrath me? He had like a wrath effect or something. So he, he discovered it. He discovered it with that ah. free, uh, with that free two you read uh -huh. on turn two. He discovers a car, different class cards. See how it says discovered a different class card. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. That's why. Uh, when you just see discover, it means from your class. If it's from different class, it's gonna specifically say it. Uh, so yeah, with decks like these, after turn 5, you should start asking yourself, can I actually kill my opponent this turn? Can I kill my opponent next turn? That's also yeah. the next level question you should be asking yourself. Because uh, uh, with decks like these, you should definitely be plotting uh, some lethal outs across several turns ahead. Like, you have the weapon, for instance, that's a very simple uh, way to just plan for the extra lethal uh, turns. You literally just have to math out if the opponent doesn't have ways to heal, usually, like you should know if the opponent has heal or not. Um, you can see turn four, opponent is at 15 health, but you're going to be playing a weapon this turn. So you basically calculate this guy is going to be at five health across two turns kind of deal. And uh, yeah. that way that's going to help you uh, better... Concentrate your damage and your attention on the important stuff instead of making some useless trades kind of you like uh, yeah, A lot yeah, of yeah. times people play not to lose Which is actually not the same thing as playing to win playing to win is you use your resources in a way that actually gives you a way to win the game in a few turns whereas playing to lose not to lose uh, is a mindset where you actually do everything you can to, to, to not take damage, to, to stick minions yeah, on the board, that yeah, kind yeah. of deal. And that I, is a tunnel vision you should definitely not find yourself too often in, because uh, that's a great way to lose games. <laughs> if you I don't... Absolutely get, I absolutely get what you're saying, because if I wasn't uh, on a call with you right now, if I'd played this game, I probably would have had traded into his board. Exactly. So I have the advantage. and that's like... Exactly. Your type of deck is basically some like, something like a burn deck. You're the one that wants to go face. The opponent is the one who wants to be trading. Unless there's like a pretty perfect thing to be trading into, a lot of the times, like 80% of the times, are you going face? The answer is always going to be yes. So... Uh... You gotta be uh, very careful how you uh, really. You gotta justify why you're making trades. You know, like uh, yeah. it's yeah, very it. easy to trade everything the opponent plays against you, but in some cases, like you kind of want him to trade, especially with things like bait and switch on the board, kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that's uh, also when you're playing. Uh, you saw how I was asking you what do you think we're doing this turn, and I wanted to hear your full thought process about what you're going to do, how you're going to spend your entire mana. And that's very important, uh, because uh, once you actually realize what cards you're going to be using, what things you're going to be doing, if you're going to be drawing cards, discovering stuff, that kind of deal, uh, you will better understand how you should sequence that. Like, see on that turn 5 where we uh, decided we're going to be playing the, the Demon as well as the Secret. Well, we decided yeah. to play the Secret first, so you can actually have better odds of getting the, the really good Secrets out of, the, out of that yeah. Demon. And yeah. uh, that way, you're basically snowballing lead after lead, small benefit after small benefit, and the snowball just gets bigger. And you saw turn 6 lethal against this guy, and he was actually trying. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, 
I would also like to ask you, you, you raised the point about, you know, healing up and uh, I, that kind of reminded me about the pre-cancer card I've, I've seen in some people's decks where it's like, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure of, of the name, but it's like, it's a legendary, I feel Zilliax. like. Zilliax. Uh, with a, with a lifesteal, right? So yeah, five... but Zilliax is a, is a very, uh, it's a very loose term nowadays. Zilliax is everything nowadays. Yeah. Like, yeah, you yeah. have Zilliax, but your Zilliax yeah. goes the discount plus the plus one plus one. Yeah. Uh, so if you're playing against the Highlander Warrior, their Zilliax is usually an eight mana, lifesteal, poison, elusive, rush, divine shield, reborn bullshit. Uh, <laughs> or a nine <laughs> mana, uh, a lifesteal, rush, Tom, divine shield, summon a copy of this. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, that, that is a good example of, uh, planning for the future. Like, if you're expecting that to be happening against you, maybe you're gonna be looking for things like Freezing Trap for this particular uh, deck. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, in so... some cases, you're literally also not gonna play a minion if you're expecting the, like, for instance, Highlander Warrior nowadays has a very dead giveaway of them having Zilliax or not. They have this one to draw Rush minion from your deck. You know it, right? The one to Town Crier. You've probably I'm seen not, it. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually sure if I have seen it. Well, anyway, that that's basically if you pay attention uh, to all of these little things, you are gonna have to know that things are gonna be happening before they actually happen. Let's say on turn one, the warrior plays this one two town crier, uh, draw a rush minion out of your deck. Mm -hmm. If you if you know enough about the meta, you're gonna know that their deck runs only two rush minions. The one is the five mana six five excavate, burrow buster. And yeah, the other yeah, is yeah. the Zilliax. So uh, if you don't see the Burrow Buster around turn 5, 6, 7, you should know for a fact there's a Zilliax coming your way. Yeah. Uh, and a way to play around the Zilliax from actually healing the shit of him uh, is maybe you don't refill the board at that point. Maybe you just try to kill the opponent with Hero Power, Kill Command, Weapon kind of deal. Um... Because if you actually allow them to attack two minions with Zilliax like that, that's basically going to heal them for 12, and that's usually very out of range for you at that point. Yes, yeah, that uh, makes sense. But yeah, that's also, a little bit of a next level uh, strategizing. Also, I think um, another question I would like to ask before we jump into the next mm -hmm. game. Uh, I actually, the funny thing uh, for me about playing like not just Hearthstone, not just card games in general, but uh, any you know one-on-one -on -one type of games, I always get anxious because hmm. when when I want to play, so it's kind of like I want to play, but I'm also really afraid of playing. Maybe if you had maybe uh, something like this yourself, or maybe if you had some students with um, some some type of behavior. The term like you're looking for is ladder anxiety. Yeah, and uh, basically when you start climbing. Uh, when you start climbing, you start feeling uh, good about yourself, how high you, you've reached, and you start uh, telling yourself, uh, uh, if I play, I might lose, so I'm not gonna play kind of deal. But also, if you don't play, you're not gonna win. So, uh, you're not yeah. gonna win, you're not gonna learn, heck, you're not gonna gain XP and shit. So, uh, <laughs> just click the button, man. As long as you feel like you're playing to your best of your abilities, as long as you don't feel like you're uh, distracted, as long as you feel like tryharding, concentrating, and uh, actually paying attention to what's happening, click that button, man. Like it ain't gonna play itself. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's the problem, you know. Especially we've when all you're had it. Newer... Even I had it back in the day. Yeah, if you're on the, especially if you're on the newer side, you kind of want to learn, but you also don't want to lose and don't want to get shit on, you know. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, nowadays it's actually not even a downside to be playing and losing, because. Uh, I mean, aside from not re reaching your next uh, rank yeah. uh, tier, uh, but uh, the thing is, back in the day, we did not have safety nets. Back in the day, you could literally be on Diamond 1 le uh, on your next game to Legend, and you can little, literally drop all the way back to Bronze 10. Uh, nowadays, the game is actually a lot more forgiving for shit like that, because uh, we have these safety nets. Uh, what the fuck are you uh, sharing here, DJ Gangster? We definitely don't uh, get into a random chat and uh, drop links without saying shit. Nobody clicked that. That and uh, next next time you do that, uh, it's gonna be a ban, my guy. 
Okay, sorry about that. Got a little bit distracted, but yeah, ladder That's anxiety fine. used to be very, uh, very big uh, back in my day. Nowadays, it's it's really a no-brainer. Just click that button, keep on playing, keep on climbing, keep on improving. Like mm -hmm. if you don't reach your rank, uh, your uh, uh, goal rank this season, you're gonna do it next time. Yeah. Uh, so you basically uh, can't even drop like right now. What's your rank? Uh, is this silver? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's silver 2. I yeah, think. if you're I'm silver just, 2, you can't drop point, lower yeah. than silver 5 right now. Like, at yeah. silver 5, you're going to stop losing stars. So the game's yeah. going to be holding your hand until you actually get good enough to reach uh, gold 10. After yeah. that, gold 10 is going to be your new lowest rank, and you can reach gold 5, that kind of deal. Aha, uh -huh, I get it. Okay. So it's, well... so it's a very, very uh, low uh, punishment for you to actually start losing games. Like, you can literally start playing achievement decks right now and not even try to win and still feel somewhat okay, because once you decide you want to be climbing, you're just going to be back all the way back to Silver 5, which is not that bad. Well, I guess then let's click that button, right? Yeah, let's do it. And you're going to click itself. I think I've, I've just played, like, maybe, like, 12... 15 games this season, something like mm -hmm. this, with a pretty low win rate so far, to be to be to be honest. But mm -hmm. you know, well, you're gonna get there. It all comes down to playing, especially nowadays. The meta keeps shifting, the patches keep coming, nerf after nerf. Like every couple of weeks, we see nerfs. Every month, we see big nerfs. Every two months, we see new cards. The game just keeps on changing, and if you don't keep playing, you're gonna be falling behind. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop uh, knowing what the opponent's playing against you. You're gonna just uh, you're not gonna be able to keep up with all the nonsense that's happening. And best way to keep yeah. up is playing. Second best is watching people play, watching videos, that kind of deal. But might as well just play yourself, you know. Okay, what yeah, are you thinking about so, this hands? Um, product nine is slow. I feel like, uh, and we don't have m much secrets. Uh, also, bait and switch. I feel like when going second, we're not gonna utilize it, especially without with only sneaky snakes. I'm Looking sure. at this hand, what do you think we're doing on turn one? Uh, with this hand, we're probably playing Slither Spear or, or just skipping, skipping the turn, probably. I think we just removed product nine, and on turn one, I think we're dropping both the one drops, so on turn two, you can bait and switch. So let's just remove product nine. Don't forget we have the coin. Uh huh, yeah. Right. So you're definitely not skipping. We're against the Paladin, and uh, this Paladin could be a Flood Paladin, who are yeah. very quick. So against quick decks like that, yeah, you gotta also be quick. The, this card is okay, probably Flood hold up. because... Okay, we, we received another one drop here. Okay, what do you think the play is gonna be still? Um... Actually... I'm still thinking about Sneaky Snakes, honestly. I think it's good. Uh, because the, since they have stealth, you, they can't really trade. Trade mm. only, right? And maybe maybe Miracle Salesman just to get... I still think or... I like the Vicious Litter Spear a bit better. Let's, let's play Vicious Litter Spear first. And then coin out the snakes. The reason uh, why... Do it, coin snakes, yes. Yeah, coin snakes. The reason why we did it like this is... You're seeing it on your screen. Now the 1-3 the is actually a 3-3. Free free. That's not exactly important in this particular oh. scenario. Uh, but in, some, in certain cases, like if the opponent actually plans on trading this somehow with their face, with their minion, at least you're going to be taking a big amount of damage, you know? Okay, that's mildly annoying. Oh, he goes face. Sure. You thought big bananas, that's going to be amazing. No, we got interesting, hidden interesting. meaning. Well... I'm thinking hidden meaning is probably good about uh, against sorry against Bally because they're probably gonna spend all their mana trying to get out creatures or something. Uh, maybe bait and switch, maybe. but I'm not sure they're gonna attack my creatures actually. Well, he showed us he's not gonna attack our shit. So yeah, I do like the hidden meaning here. And after and... you play the hidden meaning, the Naga is gonna become a two attack minion. So I think we're actually gonna be killing this thing. So yeah, play hidden meaning. One snake, so meaning... one snake, a one one snake one... pokes. The other two free kills, and the snake goes yeah. face. 
Oh, face. shit. Well, it's not a bad idea that you actually didn't do that, because right now he could have the free mana muster for battle that does give him a 1-4 weapon. So it's actually a blessing in disguise he forgot the attack there. Yeah. Especially since we don't have bait and switch active. If you had bait and switch, would have been a misplay not to attack, but since you do, it's uh, better like this. So he plays this. Divine Shield. What the That's hell? Does this guy still excavate? Seems like he... Okay, that's a decent stat stat minion right there. Rush, 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Okay, we've got Titan Forge traps, which we probably should forge, but not now. Probably. I'm I'm just I'm just saying. Uh bargain bin not ex I think we bait and switch and play Miracle Sales. Exactly, I think so mana. too. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And probably go face, I guess. Because yeah, I think is... we're, we're trying to go face with this ogre, nothing is really uh, secured, but yeah, let's try and do that. And yeah, go face. Our... If he decides to trade, he's going to be uh, getting a plus yeah. three, so that's kind of cool. Our board state is kind of better right now. Crusader aura right now, huh? Perfect. Get fucked, idiot. Crusader Aura feels like a misplay here, honestly. Mm, definitely not amazing for him. Okay, this is actually amazing. What we do you think we're doing? Uh, I mean, we play Zilix it's, since it's discounted, and, it would, and we're not sure if it's going to be discounted next turn. So I think we just play Zilix and then... You know, yes, the let's put down Zilix. And after that, do you think it's worth for us to trade? Right now, uh, there's a very bad sequence you can go for, by the way. Because right now, if you uh, attack with the eight four in his face, it does have a fifty fifty at fucking yeah, up and killing yeah, itself. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we attack with the miracle salesman. Exactly. And then yeah, then let's let's save. attack with the free free, especially since he has an aura active. It's a lot better for us to do it like this. Perfect. That's okay. some nice damage, actually. Well, get like... used to those. We had yeah. an eight attack median on last game as well on turn four. I think I think you know you know since uh, my first reaction when seeing secrets I kind of uh, have this mm, uh, have this line of thinking where it's like oh it's like MTG control decks right so it's it's kind of like casting instance or something so yeah. I, I played it like a control deck honestly okay well, that's actually it's, it's something it's like that, that. Bad. it's not it's not that bad that was very very bad oh, for him okay. yeah. Very sad okay, stuff. Yeah. Like, he, he removed 8 damage from the board to give us 4 damage instead. So, definitely yeah. not, not a bad situation. Yeah, this guy got mindfucked by all the secrets. He, he thought he had us. He had no such thing. Cool, cool. Okay, we're up to gold 10. Okay, oh, you <laughs> actually have a decent uh, star bonus, it seems. Yeah. What uh, rank did you finish last season? Oh, I don't even. I, I'm not. I don't even remember because it was like at least half a year ago or something. Oh, so this is your. That's interesting, yeah. and you actually retained all of that star bonus. It seems. Yeah, I think actually the star bonus retains if you don't play the season. Yeah, if you don't play, yeah. it's gonna keep on giving you the same star bonus until you return, kind of deal. Or at least that's my theory. I don't know. Do not quote me on uh, that one. I think the last time I played was like in August last year or something. So it's actually more than half a year. So mm. yeah, It's been a while. Okay, we're against the Mage, as you saw from the stats. Mage is actually a pretty good matchup for us, as traditionally country yeah. usually from some Mages. So we've got Bargain Bin, uh, Sneaky Snakes, and Patchwork Pals. Well, Snakes are probably nice, since they can't really deal with them. Uh, at least until we attack them, so we can maybe try to buff them or something. Uh, bargain bin. I'm not sure we need it right now, but it's really not something you should be looking for actively. It's not a bad thing to top deck, but it's definitely not something you're yeah. gonna. Um, I'm thinking play on we kind of uh, we kind of drop bargain bin and keep everything else. Mm. Patchwork Pals, we saw the stats that they're actually pretty bad to hold on to as well. They're okay later, but in the early turns you try to do a little bit of faster things. So let's just keep the snakes and toss the rest. Sure. Sure. And we still get Pals. And, and you get, get the same thing. It's a, it's a pretty bad hand. The illusion of choice. Okay. 
Well, well that's uh, that's a no-brainer, I think. Pretty much, and I'm happy you actually uh, d uh, actually acknowledged what we top deck because a lot of the times people just see their hand and they don't even care about the top deck. They just play what they already had in their mind. So always keep an open mind. Don't forget the top deck is happening. Looks okay, like that was mildly just... annoying, but he had to spend a lot of resources. Okay, so we're seeing he's playing minions. That means he's not no minion mage. That means he's most probably Sif mage. Flame, Flame geyser. Okay. We've got Viliax, which is a bad top deck right now. I feel like, and we, uh, oh my god, I, I don't know. We could, so I think we have to deal with this because it's probably it's uh, has the potential to be huge uh, and just kill off our tempo. I'm thinking we kind of have to play hidden meaning to get something. Yeah, hidden meaning right now is pretty nice. He doesn't know what the secret is. Yeah. So, uh, hidden meaning is usually not a bad turn two play for sure, because turn two free drop for you basically in most cases. Yeah. And uh, also, yeah. this artificer, you don't need to lose your mind over it. it. Yes, it does have potential to give him tons of armor, but what are these tons of armor we speak of? It's turn fucking two, he has two mana, so best he can get is two armor, and that's what he did. And now we are supposed to handle with this, but the game decided otherwise, sadly. Oh, it's sad. Shuffle a copy, copy into the, of this into your deck. And put, yeah, oh, not exactly it's, it's... anything to write home about, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, probably. I don't know. The, th the trade is going to be bad, so we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Miracle Salesman is nice. We could probably play Patchwork Pals and uh, Miracle Salesman, I th I'm thinking right now. Because uh, Hero Power isn't really that good right now, since, you know... Oh, it's it's free. It's too damage, right? But I, I'm not sure. Uh, snakes. I'm not sure what are we gonna do with them. I think we might actually decide to go off curve here. I think it's actually gonna be a good idea for you to play both your one drops and just go face for this turn because next turn you can crack open the Patchwork Pals and play Liak. And with a wide board like this, that's actually going to feel pretty nice for you. You could also just straight up Zilliax next turn as well. So that can be interesting. Oh, right. Yeah, so my my line of thinking about snakes was actually bad because we get like two two drops for one mana and it's really good for Zilliax. Yes, I'm... I was a... <laughs> Discover a spell from... Uh... Spell school, you haven't used this game. Hey, thanks for the subscribe, RK. How are you doing, my guy? How's it going, Alex? Welcome, welcome. You're going face, which makes sense. Okay, uh, what are we thinking here? I'm thinking Zilliax bait and switch, honestly. Exactly. Right I like how you keep your mind open to plays because we did say we're probably gonna patch Rook Pals Leog, but with this Zilliax, it's just a no brainer because he basically discounted it for us even further. So, yeah, yeah. let's go with those. And we and are we gonna kill go. the 1-3 this time for real. Right now we're against the Sif Mage. Sif Mage has access to some AoE later. Um, is it a good I, I was actually gonna ask, is it a good idea to make the trade with the 3-5 instead so we retain the 3-3 free, free at 3 health instead of 2? But I think I'm uh, okay uh, with this play. Uh, we are going face with most of these, but should we kill that 1-2 so you can actually protect the Zilliax a bit better? I think you're actually gonna kill the 1-2 with a 2-2. Two -two. I'm gonna explain. Uh, but yeah, kill it and yeah, go face me, with the rest. We are killing it because this guy has sorry. access to the free mana uh, reverb. Reverb, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh -huh. leaving that one two allows him to poke into it. Now he had to spend all of that mana to just fireball this. And we're gonna oh, fucking okay, do look. it again with the help of Leo. So that's kind of cool. Reverb is to two mana, right? Or, or one mana, I'm not sure. Three mana. Yeah. It's free mana, they can discover it lower. Okay. Uh, random secrets. And so, wait, what did we trigger this 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 game? I think we triggered... Uh, we triggered, triggered... Uh, Just a hidden meaning. A yeah, haven't triggered meaning, anything else. No, Product 9 is not a high value play right now. Oh, I it's think a horrible we play. play. We, we play pa Patchwork Pals. Yeah, See Patchwork what, Pals what plus Leoc, I'd say. Like, Leoc right now is plus 4 damage for you, it's a healthy boy. Oh, right, we get and we get everything. So, exactly. play yeah. this, and we just Smack go face. in the mouth. 
Uh, yeah. Against this guy, they do have access to AoE straight up. They have the five mana deal X amount of damage depending on how many spell schools they've cast. So far, this guy has only cast fire, so that's not that bad. Okay, oh, we have well, Huffer right now. That's a card. Uh, well, we're still... Okay. <laughs> he just huh. was outclassed. Massively outclassed. So, huh. yeah, see how that two mana hidden meaning turned into a two damage across three turns. Which we actually made into three damage across half of those turns. So, uh, yeah, the, the hidden meaning on turn two is uh, nothing to scoff at for sure. Yeah. Definitely. I'm kind of surprised to see him uh, concede there, because mm, I think... They just it... do that a lot against hunters. They're used to it. Well, I mean, it's cancer, yes, but at the same time, we didn't even play that many secrets. Yes. Um, yeah, but you stuck a board, and he, he knew he won't be able to deal with it anytime soon. He knew Huffer was coming. He knew bad days were ahead. Another palais. Okay, we've got Titan Forged, uh, Sneaky Snakes, and uh, we're going first, right? So mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Um, How's it going, I'm thinking we probably replace Starstrung because right now it's too slow and it is going to be like a dead card for three, four turns for now. Um, I'm also thinking we're going to replace Titan Forged. As you've said, you're not a fan of, of, you know, of keeping it. I'm not a fan, it's but it's actually well. pretty high on the win rate and on the keep rate, actually. Yeah. I'm not against well, keeping on to it just because you have a pretty solid one drop with which you actually could even not attack on turn one. So I'm actually okay holding on to the, yeah, the trap thinking, as well. So we just removed the weapon. The weapon is always getting yeah. removed because that's why we have things like uh, Bargain Bin for. Oh, okay. that's, that's, a, that's a very nice uh, first play, I think. Yeah, we'd actually rather play the Costume Singer. That gives you extra layers of flexibility for the turn after as well. Like, if you top deck bait and switch, that would be massive if he plays a minion, and we do just oh, that. There, there it is. There it is. We're gonna see... Okay, he passes. So, that. I'm thinking... How about we just forge? Because the thing about playing bait and switch... Uh... They can have like uh, just a removal spell. I'm not sure what what their options are. They Do don't they really have, have a... removal spells. Uh, it's either hand buff belly or uh, flood belly, so they don't really have uh, anything much in terms of reach right now. Playing the bait and switch is still not a bad idea because the opponent, you know what the secret is. The opponent doesn't though, so yeah. you playing bait and switch right now might not uh, allow him even to hero power. You know. Like, he might yeah. actually not hero power just so he doesn't trigger a potential hidden meaning. He goes okay, with the forge. Just, just... Uh, so we are actually assuming this guy to be a hand buff pally, and that should be the 2-4 bot. What do you think you do here? Mm, well, I'm kind of lost right now, but but but, but let, me, let me think about it. I'm kind of lost because, you know, our opponent hasn't really played anything, so I don't know what to expect right you now. You already should actually but... know exactly what his deck is, pretty much at least. You should be knowing that he's a hand buff pally by now, because he just forged the card, and the forge card is going to be the free mana 2-4 that gives your uh, hand plus 2 plus 2. Uh-huh. So... With that information, I guess we can play random secrets. The thing about playing fun. random secrets on an empty board is they're not going to get triggered most probably because uh, uh, it's, it's not negative tempo for him because he doesn't have anything to negative tempo on. So I think you'd much rather just play the costume singer as well as the hidden meaning because you just saw him forging. And uh, that means he's going to play the free mana idiot next turn and this gonna, is going to uh. give you a free mana idiot yourself. And yeah. we're also thinning out the shit out of our deck. True. Uh, I was thinking about uh, hero powering and playing costume singer, but I think yeah. Oh, trade! Logic. There you fucking go. Thank you, kind sir. You are far too kind. Oh, he attacks minion. Exactly. There awesome. we go. So the situation is getting a lot shittier for him now, isn't it? Okay. What's that? Uh, that's actually not bad. I oh think, shit! I think. We don't have the discounted, the, the discounted, but 
Let me think. Let me think. Uh, we don't need bargain bin right now because we're gonna get too much cards in our hand. Uh, what you need right now is another bait and switch potential. So best you can do is you force the far left cards because yeah. you just got a random card that gives you a little bit of extra benefit right now. And, and you play the far play left card because it's going to deal a little bit of extra damage. And, and let's we'll see if we can get another hidden. bait. Um, yeah, another hidden, hidden meaning is a good idea here. Yeah. And just go... Oh, right. And, and there's your bait. Yeah, another bait and switch and face is the place. All right, keep on rolling, partner. What do we got? Another bait and switch. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's about it for all of your secrets. This yeah. man got baited and outsmarted. Uh uh uh. Concede time, bro. Imagine if this was a freezing trap. He'd rage quit so hard on you. Aggress Poshi. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty annoying cards. That's a pretty annoying card. That's a card, you know? It's one of the cards of all time, I think. Exactly. Sadly, uh, even if you get yourself a Freezing Trap, he should be smart enough to be playing the 1-1 one -one he got out of it as well. So that would be mildly annoying. Uh, we, we have uh, 11 on board, so we're not even near lethal. Ah, uh, Jesus. I'm thinking maybe another bait and switch, honestly. Because he's gonna attack with the idiot, and there's a very sadly high even if you play another him. bait and switch, they're still gonna be enraged for his Tagris plushie. So that's not gonna help us all that much. Ah, okay, we could. Uh... That being said, though, we're probably gonna make a trade here because this five four ain't going nowhere. So let's just play the two mana bait and switch, indeed. Yeah, and you can also play the one mana sneaky snacks. Far left. Yep. That is and not the card I something said. Like, something like said. a nice trap. Play the two something mana like. hidden meaning. And we'll make the a four trade two and kills and the rest goes face. But uh, I said the one mana sneaky snakes, not the not the miracle salesman. The play would have been sneaky snakes and then a two mana one mana mantle shaper actually. But since you played the salesman, we couldn't discount the mantle shaper yeah. into a playable yeah. range anymore. So that was uh, that that definitely cost us big time. I just, I just, I just tunneled kind of because because he's a snake. If you if you look, it at is, the it is. Like That's why I said the far left <laughs> sneaky snakes, and you went for the far right instead. Yeah, it's political coordinates meme yeah. all over again. I'm sorry. Sight. This guy's gonna smack himself for the third time into a bait and switch, isn't he? Okay, there's that forge card we saw on yeah. turn two. Which we were expecting Must. on turn three, but he decided to coin instead. Interesting. Oh, that's Charge. okay. He's going face. Thanks, gay. Uh, thanks, my guy. Interesting. He decided not to get bait and switch no more. Okay, that's a good amount of damage. Would have been nice if we had a five-five on the board. I can tell you that much. What do we have? Yeah. Well. Well, since we don't have lethal right now, uh, I'm thinking we kind of have to deal with his board because that's a scary board, honestly. I'm not sure about it, but if I if I will be playing on my own, I'd probably force a trade with uh, like Star Strong Bow, uh, attack his uh, deck hand, like get it out of my face, go face whatever. I think else we'd actually like. rather go with. Uh... Observer of Mysteries, free mana Observer of Mysteries. Yeah, we we, sh we obviously want to play Mantle Shaper this turn since uh, you know we want to have something on our board. And uh... play the free mana Observer of Mysteries quickly. Yeah. Go face with everything else. Play the one mana Sneaky Snakes. Yeah. And uh, two mana Star Strong Bow and go face. That's okay. about it. Okay, uh, we kind of lost a lot of time there talking, and uh, yeah, kind of got messed up at the end. So kind of wanted to fit in that Titan Force trap. Kind of wanted to play that Mantle Shaper. Ended up not being able to do much. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. We got ourselves a good value trade there. Oh. Problem is right now he has a free free rush in there so he can uh, heal a little a little. Not sure why he didn't do that with the cat. That was a pretty stupid thing to do. Uh. 
Yeah, this guy is definitely not very bright. Okay, pretty nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, bananas. Bananas is nice. Yeah, he's right dead. Now. Oh shit, not dead. No, he's well, still that's... dead, right? With the bananas and the hero power, that's very much enough. Yeah. Wow, actually that fucks up our uh, our bananas. Uh, but uh, you still get to uh, play one banana plus hero power is enough. So let me see, we have uh, 13 on the board. Banana is going to give plus one, plus one, and hero power, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one banana though. You don't want to play all three, because, uh... I mean, even all three bananas is lethal as well, but hero power gets things quicker. But yeah, definitely uh, not playing that 5-5 on uh, the turn where we dropped this 2-2 basically cost yeah. us lethal this, the, the previous turn, I, you know? I, I, I definitely saw that, and uh, yeah. that was a pretty big misplay, I think, yeah. Yeah, well, it was basically a little bit of miscommunication, Rope was burning all of that nonsense, but definitely uh, uh, would have closed the game a bit sooner here. But again, these guys are having a very, very hard time playing around the secrets. Very, very rough indeed.